module 11 web text corpus this module will give us a short description about the method of compiling web text corpus with language data obtained from the web sources in an indian language we'll also see the problems and challenges involved into it as well as we'll try to find out the application potentials of such a corpus in the works of language technology and in various domains of language applications what is web text corpus the web corpus in principle is different from the standard digital corpus on many aspects relating to its content and composition while a normal digital corpus contains text samples both from physical and virtual worlds the no balance is normally tilted towards the samples obtained from the physical world a web corpus solely and wholly unless otherwise desired contains texts of the virtual world that means the language data that are used to build up a web corpus are practically and primarily collected from various websites from pages and similar virtual sources only the text samples are totally digital in form and in nature as no printed text is typed into it to be included in this corpus moreover this similar to multimodal corpus a web corpus contains neither imaged text data that is text not in pdf version or jpeg format or something like that nor encoded data not html is sdml or thai or claw anything of that sort also it is free from all kinds of non textual elements and properties that is diagrams tables charts pictures and others as these elements may hamper in later stages activities relating to corpus processing and linguistic data retrieval from the corpus besides text samples are completely unicode compatible therefore it is globally accessible in all formats and platforms or nlp works furthermore the nature of texts is both formal and informal since samples are compiled normally from official sites personal blogs social networking sites and many others due to these factors the language of the web corpus is both personal and public informative and imaginative casual and careful and well formed and ill formed this gives web corpus a unique linguistic identity which is different from the other digital text corpora as well as from other printed text corpora web corpus is a class of its own which has tremendous potentials to reflect on the varied texture and colorful fabric of the language used in the cyber world will now concentrate on the basic features of a web corpus based on form formation content and composition it is possible to identify some notable characteristic features of a web corpus which may differ from a general type of corpus the features are something like that it usually contains large amount of actual language data used in the virtual world 
in the form of web. It contains diverse text types. That means text can be collected from a diverse sources available in the web. It also captures the varied spatiotemporal features of language were used in the cyber world. Language data captured in this both in synchronic and diachronic form in nature. Structure of web corpus is usually balanced in composition, but it may also be skewed to a particular research topic or research area if desired. If desired so. It is adequately representative to the present state of the target language from which it is developed. Since its goal is to represent the present state of the language in use and question, it normally tries to represent the language as far as is possible with a wide variety of text types from the different domains of language used in the web. The texts included in a web corpus are usually found in unannotated form. Similar to a general te corpus, texts are stored in its raw form with a provision for extratextual and intratextual annotation with a scope for returning back to the original raw text if and when required. It contains both formal and informal texts, as the source of data is always open web sources. While formal texts are taken from official sites, informal texts are coming from personal and social uh, sites that contribute to the constitute constitution of the corpus. Easy augmentability is a unique feature of the web corpus. As and when required, it can be updated with new set of data to overcome the paucity of data as well as to overcome the skewedness or imbalance in text representation in the corpus. The text samples that are normally assembled in a web corpus are almost similar to that of a general corpus and these are always open for verification and validation. Since texts are normally obtained from freely accessible websites and home pages, so one can verify at any point of time the validity of text data just by referring to the web site or the source of the data. Since text samples are maximally representative of the actual use of language in the web, the corpus is maximally authentic with regard to its originality of the text as well as with regard to the present state of the language. In fact, authenticity of text samples in the web corpus is beyond doubt as it faithfully depicts the present state of the language in question. Quick and repeated retrieval of language data, information and examples is a crucial feature of a web corpus. Data can be extracted from, the, from this corpus quite easily and the task one does not need to do can do it easily, uh, the task one does not need to do by an expert can, can, uh, expert can do on their behalf. Also, additional skill is not required to refer to the texts available in the corpus. So, all the tasks now which are normally carried out on a general corpus can easily be carried out on a north corpus. Finally, the text database is always available for customization, a major advantage of the web corpus. Based on specific requirement, the database can be modified, minimized, enlarged, cartered, shortened or compressed 
or certain part of it can be deleted or customized to address specific research goals. Now, the purpose of the web corpus. Web corpus generation in all major Indian languages, in a particular uh, in a multilingual country like India, is a challenging research task due to various factors. Multidisciplinary monolingual web corpus in all Indian major Indian languages will supplement the existing text corpora as well as contribute in understanding the Indian languages in the printed and digital forms. Domain specific web corpora may be used as parallel translation corpora among all the major Indian languages for cross lingual research and development activities. Data of the web corpus is meant to be used for developing language processing tools for post tagging, spelling checking, lexical collocation, word processing and many other tasks of language technology and computational linguistics. The web corpus may be utilized to develop a domain specific digital lexical database for each of the Indian languages. The web corpus can also be used to compile domain specific monolingual dictionaries as well as machine-readable dictionaries usable in other works. The web corpus can also be utilized to, to develop translation support systems, language resource system as well as information retrieval system. Another important utility of this can be visualized in web-based learning system development meant for all English languages. The web corpus is also useful for theoretical linguistic studies such as language and subject domains, language change across domains, patterns of semantic change of words in texts, ambiguity in words in use, structure of sentences across text types, knowledge representations through text reformation, information embedding in text types, etc. So, what you find that web corpus has multiple application potentials similar to that uh, general corpus available to us. So, uh, we need to be very much careful to develop a web corpus keeping in mind various application potentials of the resource in mainstream linguistics, computational linguistics and language technology. The web corpus which we developed for our research purposes followed certain unique methodologies. We are going to give certain information, some information about the methodologies we apply, applied for designing this web corpus. To generate a web corpus, we apply various methodologies through which we can extract data in a uniform manner from various domains and subdomains from the web. The general issues relating to generation of a normal text corpus are also present here, also relevant to this context. The major issues that we considered with utmost importance include overall design of the web corpus, selections of domains and subdomains of texts, range of data to be collected, process of data collection, validation of the raw corpus, etc., which we have discussed in some details in other ways. So, what we find that there are many challenges involved into it. Some are technical problems, challenges, some are linguistic challenges. And how we have come across those things, we are going to develop, discuss those things. The overall design of the web corpus. The overall design of the web corpus is very important since it asks for serious consideration what kind of content, what kind of materials, what kind of text should be included in it. Also, the tool for generating a monolingual corpus, monolingual corpus of web texts has to be done in such a manner that it opens up 
a new horizons of applications for online interactive interfaces that gives users for data facilities like data storage, text editing, data search and manipulation. So it is possible to develop good interfaces for collecting data from this. First, we need to identify the subdomain domains and subdomains where from we are going to collect the data. This was the basic issue we have to take into consideration. So take samples that are collected from the web I had major domains as presented in the table here. The text you have collected from uh, 16 different domains from the web included humanities, arts, science, technology, medicine, legal documents, mass media text, social sciences, government documents, advertisements, sports, films, culture, defense, tourism and uh, agriculture. The basic thing here we want to say here is that these 16 domains we have taken for our consideration for developing the corpus but this is not confined to any other developer who are more interested to have text from other languages also other domains also. So uh, domain can vary based on the requirement of a particular corpus developer. For us we decided that at least 1000 sentences should come from each of the domains mentioned above. While trying to data collect, collect data primarily, two types of basic web sources are used for data collection. Data from standard texts, better we should say data from structured texts as well as data from semi-structured or non-structured texts. First, we had to collect structured texts from the websites of some well-known magazines, newspapers and ebooks. Data collected from these resources sources are crucial because it requires high level of persistence in compilation of data in a very consistent manner. Moreover, the whole process involves selection of domain specific texts, crawling through the digital text, removal of the source code, copying texts in doc files and text normalization. Furthermore, recurrent maintenance of personal contacts with various newspaper sites, editors and publishers is also required to get good quality data from their sources. The web offers enormous opportunity or enormous load of non-structured texts where from we need to have certain amount of data for the corpus. Such texts are available from a wide range of topics, subject matters, subject domains and text varieties with unbound limit of data accumulation possibilities. It is therefore is a tough task to a certain level uh, to restrain ourselves to the task of data collection from unstructured web sources. We have to restrain our in the task in data collection mainly from the following sources emails, web pages, home pages, news portals and blogs. In a very careful manner, we analyze and attest the relevance of the data to a particular site to the basic structure and the content of the web corpus. And when it is ascertained, we call necessary data and store these in our domain specific files of the web sources. In this case also however, the issue of copyright may arise but it is not so crucial thing because data are mostly unstructured one. So while the corpus is being developed, we can redesign those unstructured texts in a structured format 
and give a new set to that. Another important part in the task of data collection is metadata information. Each text data captured and captivated in the web corpus needs to be provided with detailed metadata information for reference and utilizations in text verification, content classification, text categorizations, corpus validation and information retrieval. It should be noted that due to variations of source, text type and other factors relating to the text generation, metadata is bound to vary to the text from text to text. For example, if a text is collected from magazines, then information of num, volume, number and the year of source of magazine are bound to vary. Such are the, on the other hand, if the text data is procured from a book, then the name of the authors, publishers, main subject, area as well as the year of publication are to be furnished in the metadata of a file. Similarly, it is necessary to provide the web's address, site name, URL, year of publication if the text data is collected from the web source. On the other hand, if data is collected from a newspaper, blog or newspaper source, then it is mandatory to supply the name of the newspaper, place of publication, broad area of the text, date of publication, etc. in the metadata profile. We can give here as an example we have given to show how the metadata is tagged for newspaper. Suppose we are collecting some corpus, some data from a web version of a newspaper or say magazine. So we need to give have several domains or seven or eight domains where metadata is required. First, the name of the magazine where from the data is collected, name of the editor, name of the article, subject area of the article, page number of the article, year of publication, place of publication. So these are the basic requirements or metadata information to be given for the texts for the data collected from different sources from the web. Then comes the question of computerizing the data. After the web text data collection is over, appropriate and adequate preparation is necessary for entering the text in electronic format in the computer. Although most cases the data is available in document format, it is always advantageous to store data in notepad in UTF format so that subsequent text access and analysis and processing of various types and formats are usually trouble free. So, however, the most laborious part of the game is to process of extraction, manipulation and storage of data in Unicode in the text font format. Also, there are problems relating to the selection of retrieval of data from various web sources as well as normalizations of the digital texts because the compilation of texts, digital text in different, different sites, different web pages have different format. So, it is very necessary that we should use certain tools, certain technique like web fuse, uh, page scholar or paragraph splitter, text normalizer tools to collect data, to normalize data, to store data and to remove many unwanted properties which are available in the text. Next part is validation of web corpus. The process of validation of web corpus is a very important part because before the text data is validated and normalized, its importance is not attested. 
The process of validation usually starts just after the completion of the process of data compilation and tech normalization. The sequential works of corpus value generation, normalization and validation can also be carried out in a parallel fashion if there is a large team involved into it. So we can do it. Otherwise, we can do it in a sequential manner. It is expected that if experts of language concerned are not present in the corpus building project, so you can hire some experts to validate the language data collected for that, so that they can certify what is stored in the web corpus is actually a good representative uh, collection of the target language. It is always desirable to hire some external experts who would examine and certify that the corpus for access so that the cloud of doubts or skepticism in biasness is ever evaporated from the mind of the people who are using it. Now, problems which we first we faced in the task of generating the web corpus. First, we call is technical problems. First problem is problem of data availability. We noted that there are texts, huge texts available in some domains, while no text is available in some other domains. For instance, getting specific text data for certain subdomains is a real big challenge. It is difficult to extract data from domains like national security and defense, forensic science social science, social society and community, ethnology, science and technology, which are several sub domains like uh, war technology, landscape and architecture, paleontology, paleogeology, genome technology. So these are the means to mention a few where from it is very difficult to get good amount of data. Either there is not sufficient data available, textual data to be used or data is encrypted in such a manner that it is not possible to retrieve from this source. Then there are problem of download and storage. There is a very difficult problem particularly in the Indian languages while downloading the text data on the server you may come across several other pro technical problems. In most cases the text data is not compatible to the encoding architecture used in the Unicode. So it may happen in many situations it is observed that you have collected data but while you are converting the data into Unicode, the data is not being converted, it turns out to be garbage. So we have to discard the amount of data. So many of the texts which are now available in the web are not Unicode compatible and for, the, for us those data has no value at all because once it is not Unicode compatible that, that data is not going to be processed or utilized in any way. So, storage of data once it is collected is another important problem. How those data has to be stored in different format, different styles. So, we can have several formats, HTML format, doc format, RTF format and their different formats can be used to make the text compatible for cross verifications for data processing and retrieval. Next problem is technical problem is copyright problem. Due to copyright constraints, it is also not possible to get the entire amount of data available on the web. So, following the rule of some copyright issues related legal problems, we have a well defined uh, say a limited size, we can go for a one third of a text or only 90 words from a paragraph or something like that, which we followed here for our purpose. To tackle the issue of copyright problem about the authenticity or the right of the publication of the texts by those people who have uploaded or put the text in the web. So copyright problem is still a big issue which is also disturbing us technically to retrieve data from the web source. So there are some 
important linguistic problems also. First problem is the spelling problems. As you know that people are not always very much careful in developing texts when they put it, they put them in the print, in the web. So a lot of errors are actually coming up. So spelling errors in cases of text like Bangla or Hindi or uh, other cases, it is very much carefully noted that spelling errors is a very frequent problem in the, in the web corpus. So while normalizing a text, we have to deal with the problem of spelling variations and have to remove those errors which are found. Also, there are certain grammatical or syntactic errors, well, uh, ill-formed sentences also found in the corpus and those ill-formed sentences are also corrected. Third important thing we have noted over here that there are some informal words which are normally not used in a formal situations are also used in the web corpus and also some abbreviated forms, some shortened forms, some crypt in, uh, crippled forms, uh, half made forms are also found there. Those forms also are taken into our corpus, but those errors are normally removed. Then there are parenthesis errors, uh, as we have noted that there is not much consistency in the parenthesis markers. So, repeated use of question marks or interrogative marks or exclamatory mark or several commas or dots or eclipses, they are very frequent, frequently used in the web corpus. So, uh, we were much careful to remove those errors to normalize the text. Also, there are problems of maintaining the discourse. We have found that sometimes a particular sentence belonging a particular kind of text belonging to a one domain has been shifted to other domain or other areas. So overlap of discourse uh, is a very common part in uh, web text corpus. So we have to be very much careful about that to maintain the discourse of the texts. Then overlapping domains also important there that is there. Uh, that has to be taken care of noted. Uh, the important part here to mention that sometimes what we have noted that a particular uh, text belonging to a particular domain can also belong to another domain and there it is a real problem for us. Suppose we have come across many texts which can at the same time belong to both philosophy as well as religion. So we are really confused to decide how a particular text uh, can belong to or can be a religious text as well as a text of philosophy. So these kinds of uh, uh, texts like or the similar kind of example, one more example I can give you that uh, a tourism text, text related to tourism to a historical places, uh, place is also related to uh, history. So that can be also taken care of as an example of overlap of domains or a text relating to description about some natural elements also overlap with the domain of geography. So overlapping domains is an important part in web text corpus generation. So that has to be taken care of. Finally, we need to identify the importance or value of a web text corpus. What we understand here, the value of web corpus will increase over the years and it will be regarded as one of the most useful resources for multiple linguistic research and investigations to come. It will pave many new avenues of studies of language, technology, communication and linguistics. If we are, if we are able to, to annotate this corpus, it will be far more useful in many domains of human knowledge eventually leading to development of various linguistic tools and resources. What we realize now here is that the world wide web which is visualized as a useful linguistic resource is itself is a unique linguistic world full of surprising linguistic data and information. In fact, it is the largest store of texts in existence freely available, covering a wide range of domains and constantly added to and updated by 
one and all. The huge collections of texts, if properly processed and annotated, can be highly useful in linguistic and non-linguistic studies, cross-linguistics comparisons, language technology, in all and all in other domains of descriptive, theoretical and applied linguistics. I personally believe in the long run, along with the corpora, corpora generated from printed texts, corpora produced from web text will also be equally useful in natural language processing, linguistic resource development, cross-lingual communication, globalization of linguistic profiles and language resources, digital lexicals generation, the companies compilation, computational lecture of language planning, e-governance and many other tasks. So, since this is the first effort made any of the Indian languages for web corpus generation, we argue that we should better try to develop web corpus for almost all the Indian languages for the benefit of the languages as well as for the people. Thank you.